Hey there, comic book fans. Today we're talking comics with the creator of your favorite demon-fighting badass, Lady Death. The founder of both Chaos and Coffin Comics, the man behind some of the most metal comics of all time, Brian Polito. Hey everybody, this is Nate with ComicBurst.com, and today we are very lucky to have the living legend himself, Brian Polito, with us. Brian, thanks for being with us today. Totally happy to be here, man. What's up? What's going on, Mr. Brian? A couple of questions we wanted to get today. Uh, with new readers just getting into your comics, or maybe say longtime collectors wanting to start reading your books, what would you suggest as a good jumping on point for them? What is a good place to jump on? I'd like to recommend jumping on to the current era of Lady Death, which is the Coffin Comics era. So that would begin with a storyline called Chaos Rules. Actually, since we've begun with new storylines since 2015, we've released seven what we call chapters. So they're thicker 40 to 48 page comics. So I'm recommending the Coffin Comics era. And then I would also recommend go back in time to the Chaos Comics era. Um, I may be biased, but that was a uh, Chaos Comics era was done under my own tutelage and lasted between what, 92 to 2002. Now, in between all that, there are a couple of other publishers, Avatar Boundless, and you don't even have to bother reading those because as we revealed in Chaos Rules, it's not even part of the canon. It was part of when Lady Death was cursed and fell asleep. These are some of the dreams and nightmares that she had. Excellent. Well, that's, I think that's helpful. I think there's always a lot of question about, especially what you just said about those books, you know, with the particular publishers. Do they, do they count? Do they not count? I think that comes up a lot. So that's, I think that's good. Did you clear that up for everybody? Now you know. Now we know. The other uh, thing I'd like to point out, Nathan, if I may, is that um, the, our Lady Death is the same Lady Death from the Chaos Era. It's uh, we've brought her forward. One of the fascinating things from a continuity point of view is she is in a current era. We're saying it's the continuity of chaos, but many of those characters are not involved. So maybe that is one day a story that could be resolved. But for now, her new reality is all the chaos, other chaos comics era characters were blanked out. So what happened? And I can tell you there's a story reason behind that, and one day we will get to it. Excellent. Awesome. Exciting things to come for sure. Um, now, as collectors, we love gimmick covers, uh, whether it's foil lettering, adding a bit of reflection off the newsstand, embossed characters, bringing a new texture, amazingly tooled leather covers, or, of course, our favorite chromium wraparound. We are, as collectors, interested. Is there a special cover that you have personally wanted to do that just – it just – haven't maybe gotten to yet or just hasn't been feasible to do? Well, I think you're right. I, I have a long history of having fun with cover enhancements. I've always loved them. You know, I always looked at it as a, a way of competing with the big boys. In the 90s, uh, you would have these monolithic companies, Marvel DC putting out these books, but having gigantic marketing budgets. And for me to compete, I thought maybe if I could offer something heretofore unseen, like I did with the leather covers or the um, the flocked covers, most known as the velvet covers. And I was an early adopter of chromium. And it really did allow us to compete because people would just go by and go, what the heck is this? And, uh, you know, it was worth intangible millions of marketing dollars. But to answer your question specifically, you're asking, are there any that we haven't done yet? And what makes that difficult to answer is, even as you and I speak, this very afternoon, we are trying to debug a couple of cover enhancements that we haven't done. So what I will say is I still have a few in the pocket. What I can say simply is, you know, we actually haven't done, I mean, we've done sculpture embossed, we've done glow in the dark, glow in the dark, chromium, all kinds of stuff. But one of the more obvious ones we haven't done that I would like to do is lenticular. Pretty simple. Like, we, we haven't done that one. And um, the thing that I'm very attracted to with Lenticular, though, is to do it at a very, very small print run. Whereas the Marvel DC ones you see, the print runs are super high. And that's, in a sense, what makes them feasible. By making the super high print runs, it drives the overall cost to make those individual items way down. Sure. But trying to debug and trying to get like a lenticular that there's only maybe 200 of or 250 and have it reasonably priced is is sort of the challenge. But so lenticular is one. 
and there are a couple others up my sleeve, but I can't tell you. I can tell you <laughs> off the record over a beer, but to like give it away just yet would be it'd be no fun for anybody because I actually love the element of surprise in presenting folks stuff that would be a surprise. Excellent. Yeah, and I, I think I think that comes through, especially to the fans. You are the master of the of the gimmick cover. I, I, and I'll, I'm personally saying that because I'm someone that actively seeks gimmick covers, and 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 your covers are my favorite covers. Thank you. Hey, man, no apologies about them. I love them. They're amazing. They're great. I, you know, the crystals, the leather. It's, it's all great stuff. Thank you. All right. So you've let's see. In the '90s, there was an animated movie for Lady Death. Huge popularity of Cop and Com. Is there any chance of a new animated movie or show? Well, I'll tell you, um, there is a chance. I don't know that we're looking right now at animation, but what I can tell you, and since you asked, is uh, I, our company, we have teamed up with a producer of History Channel's Vikings, a woman named Sherry Marsh. We really gelled a couple of years ago, and we formed a production entity for the expressed uh, purpose of bringing – Coffin Comics characters to life. And so, in so far as what I can speak about on Lady Death is, we then spent some time trying to find like minded showrunners, someone who would actually oversee and write and uh, produce the show, but people who are accredited and excited, excited for this. So, we did find those people. I am not going to announce those people, but what I can tease you and say is that the two showrunners. For the Lady Death live action R-rated cable TV show are Emmy Award winning writers most commonly associated with Hulu's Handmaiden's Tale. So we put all these elements together and we are about to present them to the marketplace. And by that we mean we will be sending uh, sending these talented showrunners out and we'll present our point of view of what this series would be like to respective studios. So that's something actually we've been behind the scenes actively involved in for the last couple of years. And I am not at liberty to say, but I would say that our character La Muerta is even further along in that same vein. Wow. Uh, maybe even crazier. So I could <laughs> I could tease you about it. It's not my it's yet to say, but and you know, I, I'm very reluctant to kind of make announcements of any sort or even teases, but we're pretty close, particularly on La Muerta. And it's uh, pretty fascinating. I think that culturally the success of movies like Coco and Black Panther have really changed motion picture studios in how they look at diversity in movies and how it can potentially attract broader audiences. Because largely, let's say, let's take La Marta, for example. That is a largely Chicano, Mexican-American cast. Yes. I mean, literally 95% of the characters are Mexican-American. Right. So, but now... The, again, the success of Coco, the success of Black Panther, and, and girl power is all kind of awakening the studios to this potential of uh, diverse entertainment for a broader audience. So that's my long-winded way of saying, probably no animation, but let's keep an eye out for TV shows movies. That's exciting. I, I, th- I That's really, I think, I think that would actually even translate mm-hmm. better than an animated film, to be quite honest. Yeah, we come from the, in comics, we come from that tradition of um, there's always cliffhangers, there's always an episode. So that's where the case of Lady Death is a, is a, a TV series. It's great because you can tell these ongoing tale, whereas, you know, um, a feature film is one and done, but it'd be kind of cool season after season. Exactly. Season, seeing her struggle and her rise through the ranks in hell, as an example. Yeah, that's exciting. You know, even that, that continuity, that everything, you know, the, the story doesn't exactly. have to end. That's, that's great. No, Chaos Comics had its own heavy metal album back in the 90s, in which the nostalgic fans are still very much in love with. Yes. If Coffin Comics had its own music album, who are some of the bands you would like to see on it today? So, well, I, it'd be pretty easy to, because I write with uh, metal in mind at all times. I think, let's put uh, Arch Enemy, Lamb of God, Slipknot. Um, to change the tone, I might throw in... Um, uh, what is it, Greta Von Fleet, that new Zeppelin-esque sounding act as well. We can't forget the classics, so I would definitely have songs by Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, Dio, Ozzy, Motley awesome. Crue, because that's kind of the, the vibe and the feel. I would say, like, as an example, as I was reading, um, or as I was writing and coming up with a story for Laid Up Chaos Rules, I was listening in particular to Arch Enemy. And there's a song called With Black Flags We March. And that was the song that just kept informing the new era of Coffin Comics storytelling. So those are some of the acts. Um, I just recently, I think even since I uh, spoke to you last, 
I saw Watain and Destroyer mm. 666. Wow. They're two pretty intense black metal bands, and they're, I thought they're great. And uh, I've been a fan of Watain for a while. I've seen them before, but Destroyer 666 was new for me. I think they're an Australian outfit, and they were strong. And I mean, their type of music fits perfectly into the mythology and, and how we roll in Coffin. That's awesome. Yeah, that, I think that's uh, pretty much so as you can tell, it's like, yeah. It's all kind. Oh, it is. The, the fan base is – I've always seen the fan base as, you know, the guys that – love to write Slayer on the notebook in, in the, in the classroom or, you know, the, the guys that had the, the, the denim jackets. And that was, that was me. That was my friends in high school. And now I still see the readers like that. And that's great. We appeal to the fans of, we appeal, appeal, appeal to the fans of Slayer or the people who like that state of mind, you know, as an example. So there might be a person with a rebellious spirit. And even if Slayer isn't their bag, the kind of energy that we espouse is maybe an attractive energy. And that can apply to like literally, I tell you, doctors, lawyers, accountants, librarians, people from all walks of life. Because it's fascinating as much as I dig the metal, uh, people will like the comics and they're like, well, we don't like your heavy metal, man, but you know, we kind of like your energy. Right. And, and that's great for me as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, one more question for you. Um, and it's, it's a question we're going to be asking all sure. artists now. That I, I didn't get a chance to ask you last time, and I'm kind of excited to ask you this time. But if you could be any superhero from any any publisher, anytime, anywhere, who would it be and why? Um, wow, that's what a fun question. I haven't been asked that. It's interesting. <laughs> Captain America is my favorite character of all time. I have read him consistently without fail since July of 1974. I don't know if I want to be Captain America because if I get to pick any kind of character, how about this? How about I get to be uh, Thanos or Darkseid, but I get to use my powers for good instead of evil. Nice. And I don't know if I could pick between those two dudes because I really like them both. I like Darkseid and I like his uh, anti-life equation yep. and energy. I think those the beams that come out of his eyes are called the Nika beams. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, one of the I, yeah okay. So I'll be either Thanos or uh, Dark Side, but I'll use my powers for good. But let me keep answering the question. It's a rich question. I also, as soon as you ask that question, I'm sort of thinking, wow, why don't I be Commandy, the last boy on Earth, which was a DC character and uh, a Jack Kirby creation, and he doesn't even have any powers, but his comic and his story was so far out, and his adventures were so trippy that it'd be really fun to experience them. I, I mean, as a small example. He met up with this crazy guy who was a, a buyer seller of things. His name was Mr. Sacker, and he was this giant snake. And he actually uh, recruited a commandy into a race, which was uh, which was done by grasshopper giant grasshoppers. And you know, Cam Commandy was on top of the grasshoppers, winning a race. So I don't know, maybe just for fun, I would like to be in the story. Oh man, see, like it's a tough question, man. How can you narrow it down to one? Because also, why don't I just be Ghost Rider? Because go, you know, like the original Johnny Blaze, because he's cool. He's like the coolest character. Don't get me started, man. This is a tough question to ask for you to be. This is the best answer I could have asked for right here. Uh, this this is fantastic, Brian. Do you have? Is there any major projects that you can talk about on the way? <laughs> What's on the horizon for uh, for Coffin and Brian? Now that you've asked what's on the horizon, let me tell you, coming May, what is it, May 9th to Kickstarter is going to be La Muerta Retribution. This con concludes the storyline that we began last year with La Muerta Vengeance, and we bring back the entire creative team. So that's Mike McLean, Joel Gomez, C. De La Cruz, and we have covers by a who's who of phenomenal talent, including, let's see here, uh, Jamie Tindall, Mike Crow, Colette Turner, Richard wow. Ortiz, truly the list goes on. Um, also, here we are coming into the big convention season, so Coffin Comics will be in full effect at Phoenix Comic Con, Denver Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con, and Dragon Con. And for each one of those events, we have planned an onslaught of super special radical exclusives, including work by J. Scott Campbell, work by Marat Michaels, Frank Cho, Richard, again, Richard Ortiz, the list goes on. Like we're pulling no punches, we're taking no prisoners, we're out, we're out for blood, man. So come on out. We're having a blast at those. And uh, that's kind of some of what's coming up in the short term. We are in really good shape for the current Lady Death Apocalyptic Abyss Kickstarter. Um, 
We have gone to press on all every single book. Every single item is at the printer. We have received the great majority of the stretch goals. We're printing the fine art print. The patches are in the mail. So we're really in very, very good shape to begin shipping, as we promised, right there at the beginning of May. So that's some of the things to look forward to in the short term. Excellent. Wow. Lots, lots of fun and, and excitement coming out of Coffin and Brian. Brian, thank you so much for joining us today. We very much appreciate having you. Thank you again. <laughs> the pleasure is all mine. Have a great day. Peace out. Holler at you later. <laughs> later, Brian. Be sure to check us out at comicburst.com for more exclusive and original videos like this. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to hit that like button.